The latest episode of Monarch Legacy of Monsters is now available on Apple TV and brought many surprises. What will be the future of the series? Did Shaw die? Where did Godzilla go? And why is Apex monitoring Kong instead of Monarch in 2017? Are you confused? So come with me in this video and I'll explain everything that's happening and all the hooks left for a continuation and even for Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Welcome back to Nerds Insights, your daily nerd news channel. After nine long weeks, we finally finished the first season of Monarch Legacy of Monsters, leaving hooks for the second season and, of course, many unanswered questions. Among them, the main ones are, did Lee Shaw die? What happened to Godzilla? Why is Apex Cybernetics monitoring Kong and not Monarch back in 2017? What will be the future of Tim, Kentaro, Mei, Kate and now Keiko? In this video, we will unravel all these mysteries and everything that can happen in a future continuation and even in the movie Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. But before that, like this video and comment below, from 0 to 10, what overall rating do you give to this first season of Monarch Legacy of Monsters? In my opinion, it's a 9 and what about yours? Before I tell you all this, I have to make some comments about Episode 9, as I didn't analyze that episode because I was on a trip, Episode 9 was a very revealing episode, it spans 3 years since Keiko's death until the expedition, which we thought would be in the Hollow Earth, but no, it's a rift between the Hollow Earth and our normal Earth, called Axis Mundi, serving as portals for the Titans. Lee entered that place but ended up getting stuck and when he finally managed to get out, 20 years had passed, so it works somewhat like Dragon Ball Z's hyperbolic time chamber, who remembers that? You enter a lot of time passes inside and outside, very little time goes by, it's the same with Axis Mundi, while a lot of time passes in our normal Earth, very little time has passed in Axis Mundi, so when we see Keiko at the end of the episode, for her, only 57 days have passed, while in our normal time, 33 years have passed, now moving on to episode 10, we have some interesting points. The first point is that Keiko Handa is very tough because in 57 days, she managed to feed herself, arm herself, understand the behavior of the monsters living there and even program that ball whose name I forgot, to send a signal for 33 years to the surface. This woman is very intelligent, very tough, she's one of the greatest scientists we'll have in the monsterverse, but the question is. Where is she until today? Because we haven't seen her at all during the Godzilla King of the Monsters or Godzilla vs. Kong films. Not even in Monarch or Apex Cybernetics. So where has Keiko been? And this also leads us to the same question about Kate, Kentaro, Mei and Timothy. Where are these guys? Since they haven't been mentioned at all in Apex or Monarch in the Monsterverse films. And now that Apex no longer exists as it used to, where have they ended up? Unfortunately, this is a doubt that we won't be able to answer for real. Obviously, they hadn't planned all this until now in the series but they'll have to find a way to explain what happened to these characters. Another question that won't stop is, did Lee Shaw die? Come on, between us, do you really think Lee Shaw would die in that way in the middle of the confusion? Especially Leland Lafayette Shaw 3. It's obvious that Lee Shaw is still alive and will stay inside a little longer and now that people know how this gravitational dimensional rift works, it's obvious they'll say Shaw is still inside and they'll find a way to rescue him, as only a titan needs to guide them through the path and we also have to remember that Godzilla is still there, hanging around. So Godzilla can be Shaw's way back to the Earth's surface and as they say, if you don't see the body, you have to doubt. We also can't know what Shaw's future will be like, whether he will continue working alone, stop, or continue with Keiko, which is the most likely to happen. However I think they won't ally with Apex and now I wanted to share my theory about what I think will happen. I believe that Timothy, Duval, Lee Shaw, Keiko, Kentaro, Mei and the others won't stay in Apex for long. When they discover what they're doing with Mechagodzilla and go against Apex, they'll probably flee and disappear, trying somehow to thwart Apex's plans. That's why they weren't mentioned at all in the movie and didn't appear. That's my theory for these characters. Now moving away from the human part and going to the Titans part, it's so good to see Godzilla fight, isn't it? When Godzilla came out of the dimensional rift, I was already screaming, it's the king, and he appears to fight the Ion's dragon, which is extremely gigantic. He grew a lot, just like Kong did. He grew a lot and very fast, but still, he wasn't a match for Godzilla, who defeated him very easily, tearing off one of his wings and already sending his atomic breath in his face, sinking the Ion's dragon into the ground, so we know that Godzilla has free access to our land, Axis Mundi, in the Hollow Earth, so Godzilla can roam freely. He just hasn't returned to the Hollow Earth until today because he didn't want to, because it's much cooler for him here. He is the Alpha of all and they're in the Hollow Earth, 
he's not as alpha as he is here on the surface, if you're not understanding what I'm saying, there's a video here in the card to explain it to you, and now the scene that everyone was in doubt about what's happening is that after they leave Axis Mundi, they arrive at Skull Island and two years have passed, somehow, Hiroshi found a way to know exactly where and when they would appear and already left everything ready and here comes the most confusing scene in the series after an alarm sounds and people run to take shelter. We see that this apex cybernetic space is on Skull Island, and the King of Skull Island appears. Now we saw that it's Monarch that is responsible for Kong. Wait, I'm going to remember her name, responsible for taking care of Kong for a long time, along with Jia, Dr. Eileen Andrews. I remember the name Ha. So why is Apex monitoring Kong? But are they monitoring Kong or fleeing from Kong? Now I got you, didn't I? They're not monitoring Kong, they're taking refuge, they're hiding from Kong. Because if you noticed, there's no whole structure around to contain Kong from the outside world, like it was shown in Godzilla vs. Kong, that capable of making a fake sky, capable of making Kong very angry, there's none of that there, meaning they're not monitoring Kong, they're really hiding from Kong. I'll talk about this in more detail in another separate video, but basically, that's it. They're not monitoring Kong, they're hiding from Kong so that Kong doesn't start destroying everything and breaking everything, they're just on Skull Island waiting for Keiko, Kate, Shaw, and Mei to arrive. That's why you got it wrong. Now in my next video, I'll explain all this properly. But hey, what did you think of the series? If you haven't commented from 0 to 10 yet, put it there because I really want to know your opinion and rest assured that I'll ask you why you gave that score and of course, subscribe to the channel because we have videos every day about the best of nerd culture. I saw that many people were already giving me spoilers here in the community about the end of the series and in the other videos I had released, but it's okay. I was very happy that you guys were interested in knowing my opinion and hearing my analysis, we're together once again, take care and until next time.